Hello and welcome to another Nimble video tutorial. It's been about, I guess, two or three weeks since I've done an update, so I wanted to crank out a few this week so I can give you a good look at what I've been up to. Um, last week I read an interesting article that gave me a little insight into myself. Um, I read an article that discussed a the builder design pattern, and it explains um, which I didn't, I wasn't aware of. It explains exactly a method of designing software that follows identical to what I use to design all the software that I develop um, personally. Um, I had no idea it had an official name. For me, it's common sense development, and and it has uh, it follows the core principles that are important to me. Um, and I, I was really impressed when I read the article because it was uh, both posted here on LinkedIn. And I also found a nice wiki um, that explains the builder design pattern. In short, what it does, or the way it works is, you have a, a builder um, module that I guess I would say calls, it has the components or the pieces that it uses to build. The concrete builder is the intelligence that puts them all together and it outputs a product. Um, in layman's terms, what I call this is the engine. Um, and then there is the director. The director is the application that has all the brains that instructs the engine how to build the final product. I've used this design pattern for Nimble, um, JS, the IDE, the Explorations Role Playing Game Engines, and the Emotions Graphic Engine. Anything that has an engine, I guess, would follow this pattern. It, it works well with this pattern, and I guess I try to model everything that I design off of an engine because the benefits are maximum reuse of code, uh, in my opinion, more stability, and as you continue to use it, um, you get an exponential growth in productivity. Um, the more components you build, the more reuse you'll have, so that means you don't have to go back and rebuild that component later. It also affects the um, design time, accuracy, and the footprint size of your both your frameworks and your uh, output product. I also did some time to look up on some speaking of framework sizes just to give you an idea of the framework size of, of all the different well the popular frameworks out there. One thing to note if you look at Angular and Angular 2 they're pushing uh, about 700 to 500 to 700k um, for a framework and Many people think that's a that that's a pretty large size, and I, I guess I agree. It's really over-engineered. Um, nimble, I think I have it pulled up here. The full Nimble stack is uh, roughly 282k. Um, it's it's complete as far as I'm concerned. I think if I add in any new features to it, I might push it to a max of 300k, um, and that's just minified and obfuscated. The GZIP version of the entire framework is 60k um, again I don't want this I don't want to design a framework that is bloated or takes a long time to load it's meant to be lean and mean and and reusable and fast which brings me to the point of this demo how to create a, a quick reusable components the main one of the main um, philosophies behind this design pattern I think is probably interfaces um, you build a component and you don't want to tightly bind it to an object and a lot of people who are using object oriented programming are, are building in dependencies and linking components together and to me that just defeats the purpose of making a component the idea is that after you build a component the first thing you should do is build an interface to it so that other components can talk to it it can work within your app and then you can rip that component out and reuse it that's not being followed as a as a standard within most of the frameworks and that's why they fall short of what I'm about to show you. I found this website, I Like Pixels, and what it does is a online CSS speech bubble creator. One of the beautiful parts about Nimble is that it can wrap just about any code that other people generate without following any really rules into a component that can be reused over and over again inside a Nimble application. This particular website has a speech bubble that you can customize of where the tick mark will go. You can change the color, size, font, and then it will create CSS for you for the component that you just selected based on your, your um, 
settings. So I built a speech bubble with the tick mark in all four locations. I ran a compare on the CSS and was able to refactor it into one CSS that took three imports to, inputs to program a speech bubble. Once I had the CSS refactored, I used the, the nimble.web file format, which is similar to an XML file, to build a reusable web component. The only inputs I put was a size so that when the component is dragged inside the IDE, a default size that it would appear. The type, it's going to appear on a div and be given the type of a text.bubble, which is the same name. It should match the same name as the file. And then there's the CSS code here, starting in the CSS tag that will control when the styles and how the styles can be added. After you copy the CSS in, the only thing you need to do is in the declare, um, tell the number runtime to load the CSS into the application, make it accessible to the, your app. That's all it takes. You now have a reusable CSS speech bubble for any number application from now till whenever. Um, you should never have to rebuild this. You should never have to, once it's created, you should never have to edit it. It should always work and it'll save you time in the future. The only additional um, work I did was to create the preview images for the IDE to give you, you know, to make it look a little more pleasant. So let's take a look at this. When you click on the custom web libraries, you'll get a default uh, container here and it will wait until you select the library before it will initialize. This is the preview image that I created to let you know that it's the speech bubble component. And if I select it, this is the SDK image that um, is rendered on the um, surface when it's being used. Once this is dropped on, this, on the um, dialog, it has already imported or has a connection to the CSS and the declare statement, and it's ready to be, be used. I can edit the class property of this particular guy. And by saying it's a bubble with the tick top tick, and it's light, it will make a white speech bubble with the tick mark centered at the top. If I change this class to left, the tick mark will appear on the left similar to what the preview um, looks like. So it's pre it's programmable so that you can reuse it um, in any project. But we don't really want a speech bubble that is, you know, appears within a container for our, our purpose. We want this, the container itself to be the speech bubble. So in this case, we're going to delete this component. And Nimble will ask, um, do you want to remove the web declares? And in our case, because we want, we still want to use it, we just didn't want to use it on this object, we say no. So now this uh, project still has the CSS and web declares um, within the project. And we can apply, we can apply the speech bubble to this surface. In this example, what I did is I added a label which is going to hold the caption of whatever text we want to display in the bubble. And then we're going to grab the outer surface and look at the class attribute and then add bubble. We're going to have a bottom tick and it's going to be dark. Once we have made that, that change, we can build this project and take a look. So now we have a reusable speech bubble created with uh, a little bit of CSS, the nimble web declares, 
in a simple web file. Um, we can go back just to give you another look to make let you know I wasn't joking. We have the dialogue here. We're gonna adjust the class settings to make it um, to adjust the speech bubble settings and rebuild this project. we have rebuild the project when we refresh we have the same speech bubble light with light with the dark letters and the tick mark on the left hand side I just want to give you a look at um, how easy it is to make reusable components um, when you use the builder design pattern it, it's it's all about maximum reuse and I think nimble facilitates that that nicely thank you for watching